Okay, so when we have set up our buttons, we are ready to add some functions to them so that they can um, trigger some actions on our player. So we will have to open up our player script and then you will have to go to the bottom of our player script and in here we'll have to add some different function. First of all, we are going to make a function called jump. Let's call it button jump so we don't interfere with all the other functionality. We are going to make a function called button attack. And we are going to make a function called um, button. What else do we need? We need the slide. And we need to make a function called button uh, throw. And then we need to make a function called move, so public void button move. And this one needs to take a direction because we're going to use the same function, but we need to know if we are going to move to the left or to the right. And there we go. So now we should have these five functions. So now that we have created the structure of our functions, we can start implementing them. So let's take one function at a time and then test it before we move on to the next one so that we're sure that everything works as it should. First of all, we need to implement the jump button. So the first thing we have to do is to add or is to access the animator. And on the animator, we'll simply have to say my animator dot set trigger jump because we are using this jump trigger to make sure that the player is jumping. Besides that, we also have a boolean that keeps track of if we are jumping or not. So we'll also have to say is j jump or jump it's called jump is true. So now we know that we are jumping. So let's save this. When we have done this, we will have to assign the jump button in unity to this function here. So if we Go back here. Let's try to move the inspector so you guys can also see something. So we have this on click event. If I go to my hierarchy and select the jump button, then you'll see in the button of the button script, we have an on click event. And this event is triggered whenever I go to my game and click on this button here. So I will have to make sure that I trigger the right function. So to do that, we'll have to click on the little plus here to add a new function and then you will have to move it one more time then you'll have to find your player and take the player object because the script is sitting on our player you have the player script here and it's actually sitting there what we need to drag onto it so if we select our jump button then we can take our player and drag him onto the empty slot here in the unclick event and when you have done that you can select the function go to the player script and then find the button jump function. So now we have assigned this jump button to the player's jump function here. So it will be triggered whenever we actually, um, um, yeah, when we actually click on that button. So let's see, can we put this back in place? Ah, I'll do that later. So now we have our inspector here instead. Anyway, um, if we play the game now, the player should jump when I click this. And as you can see now, when I click the jump button, he is actually also jumping in the game. And we can also run and we can jump at the same time as you can see here. Okay, so that was implementation of the jump button. The next thing we'll have to implement is our um, slide, for example. Let's see what the next thing is actually. So that's our attack. Attack is fairly easy. That's just my animator dot set trigger attack so let's save this and jump back into unity and give me a sec i'm just gonna save my scene so that i don't crash or if i crash it's, it's still saved then we select the attack button we take the event here click on the plus we find the player we drag the player onto this spot we select the function and select player and maybe this is a little off screen, but then you find the button attack. And we play the game. And let's see if we click the attack. Now he attacks. So 
when you have make sure that that works, you can jump back in here. Then we do the exact same thing with the slide. My animator set trigger slide. And we save this, go back in Unity, select the slide button, click on the plus, take the player and drag him onto this. Select the function player and find the slide button slide. And we play the game and remember you need to run while sliding. So if you run the slide, you'll see he can still slide. And let's add the throw. On the throw button, you write my animator dot set trigger throw. I think you are getting the hang of this. And you save, jump back into Unity, select the throw button, take the uh, click the plus first, of course, take the player, drag him onto the empty spot, function, player, button throw. And then we play the game again. And we test that throw works, it doesn't. Parameter throw does not exist. So let's see what I called my throw parameter. I can click on my player and go to my animator and see it is called throw. I have misspelled it, of course. <laughs> so here I wrote throw wrong. There we go. So if you also misspelled it, of course, go in and um, correct it because I have throw or whatever I spelled there. Of course, it needs to be throw. So let's test one more time. Save jump back into the game and let's see if I click the button yeah now he throws everything I can jump and I can throw at the same time and everything okay so that was the easy part the next thing we need to do is to make sure that our player can move and our move is a little different than the others because we need to add a little more function uh, a little more things to it before we can move on our buttons First of all, we will have to use this direction to indicate what direction we are running. So the lift button should of course give us minus one and the right one should give us plus one. So um, let's make a um, field up here in the top. Let's make a private field called, uh, not field, private float called direction. And this direction will hold the direction that we are pressing on our button. So if we go back down here, we can say this dot direction equals direction. Okay. So now we are actually setting our direction. Besides that, we will also have to create another um, Boolean that is called move so that we know if we need to move or not while pressing the button. So let's go back up here to our fields and under direction make a private bool called move and this move will have to be set to true in our um, move function here so we say this dot move equals true so we know that we're moving so this is our button move script uh, function uh, we will have to jump to our um, Let's find it here, fixed update. And in here we'll have to change a few things or add a few things at least. First of all, let's make an if statement here. Let's set if move. So if we are moving with our buttons, we have to execute some specific code here. And else, else we'll have to um, run this code here. So this code here is for moving with our arrow keys. This code up here is for moving with our buttons. So this code here still works and everything, but when we click on a button, move will be true and we will handle our movement accordingly to what's bu which button we are pressing. But when we are not pressing any buttons, we can handle our movement down here with the normal uh, horizontal um, input. Okay, so first of all, we can call the flip function. We can say flip and use the direction here so now we should be able to flip our character if, if we call the function out there. So let's try to save this and jump back into Unity because right now we are checking, well, are we moving? When we click a button, move is true. And then we flip using the direction and the direction, well, we get the direction from our button right here. So you'll see how it works in a, in a second. So we're not going to use the normal trigger on our buttons. Let's try the lift button first. 
So first of all, we're not going to use the on click here. We are going to add an event trigger where we can use some other events to move around. So we'll have to click on the lift button, click add component and write event. And then you'll see there's something called an event trigger. And under that trigger, we can add some other um, events. For example, we can add a pointer up event and a point down. On click is basically a click on a button uh, when you point down. But we can actually also look um, or, or we can actually check if we let go of the pointer here. So we're going to use that instead. So click add new event type and then click on pointer down. And on pointer down, we can click the little plus and we can take our player and drag onto the empty spot, find the function player and find that one called button move. And you'll see it asks for a float here because we created the function like so that it wants a direction. So when we click the button, we need to give in this direction as a parameter. So here we can actually say if we want to go to the left, well, then we can say minus one. So we know we're going to the left. When we have done that, we can also click on the right button and add component, event trigger, click add event type, go to, um, let's see, pointer down and click the plus, take the player and drag him onto here and then select the function player and find the move again, button move and then give positive one instead, just one. I can see that my buttons are turned wrong. Um, the right button comes before the left one is to the left. So we can just change the places here. As you can see, if we swap the places here in the hierarchy, well, then they also switch places here. So it makes more sense that the left button is, is to the left and the right button is to the right. Okay, let's try this. If I play this and I click here, the character flips. So now you can see we can flip the character in another direction by clicking the buttons now. But of course we can't move yet because we haven't added that functionality uh, yet. But you should be able to, to flip him now. Okay, so the button move is basically done, but we'll have to go up to our, um, what's called, fixed update here. Because inside fixed update, we'll have to add some more functionality to move here. First of all, we will need to handle our movement. Down here, we are handling our movement by using the horizontal axis, but we need to handle our movement by using our direction. So we'll do this in two steps. First of all, I'll, I'll show you how to just make him move. We can say handle movement in here. And then we can give him the direction here. There we go. So now we have a handle movement function that just takes in the direction and moves him. So if I save this and I jump in here, you'll see that we can make him move to the left and to the right. So two things are wrong here. When I click to the left button, he keeps running. And when I click to the right, he keeps running and he accelerates very fast or basically he doesn't accelerate. He just has the highest speed. Um, if you can see here, when I click on the keyboard, he starts slowly a little slow and then he accelerates up because of the axis, right? But if I click here, he has full speed right away. So we'll have to make sure that he stops running when I don't click the button and we'll have to make sure that he doesn't accelerate so fast. So let's make sure that he stops running first of all. Um, so we will have to add another function in the bottom here called public void stop. Now nah, let's call it button stop move. And this function here should make him stop moving when we let go of the button here. First of all, we need to set our direction to zero. And we need to set um, our move to false. So when we call stop move, our direction is, is zero. So we can't move and we tell him that we're not moving anymore. So it's false. So if we save this and jump back in the game and select the lift button first, then we can add a new event and we can take the um, pointer up. This is when you let go of your button, which means that you're not running anymore or clicking anymore, I mean. And instead of player button move, we call the player and button stop move here 
and the same goes for the right button select the right button click add event and find the point up and select here player and then select the button stop move if I could find it there so if we I'm just going to save the scene so I don't have any problems if I crash so now you can see when you click the buttons he runs and he stops when you stop clicking it as you can see here okay but he still accelerates way faster as you can see and now it's very easy to see that he's accelerating because if I click the, the keyboard yeah okay he, he he runs a little slower so what can we do about that well we can lerp his speed instead of just setting it uh, directly to our direction here so let's try to do that in our fixed update I lost my place here here we go inside fixed update we will have to lerp his speed so to do that we'll also have to add another field so up here actually uh, we'll have to make a private float called uh, button horizontal and the reason that I'm making it up here is because I don't want to reset it every time we run fixed update so to keep the value I created it here when you have created that we can go back to our fixed update and inside fixed update we can say this dot button horizontal is equal to math f dot lerp because we want to lerp from the value so we increase it a little every time we run the, the um, run the loop here and we are going to lerp it from the current value of the button horizontal towards the direction which is minus one or plus one and we are going to use the time dot delta time and I think I want to multiply it by two this is the speed two is the speed right now acceleration speed so basically you could make a variable called acceleration acceleration speed and and multiply it here so instead of using the direction directly here we simply have to use the button horizontal here to handle our movement so this value will be increased every time we run the loop so let's try to play the game and oh I don't need to click the keyboard of course let's see now you can see when we click the buttons here he starts running but you can see there is actually a problem he runs a little <laughs> to the wrong side when we click the buttons so we'll have to figure out why he is like running to the wrong direction right away let's see so if you jump back into your um, your player script um, and scroll all the way down to your button stop move we will of course also have to reset the horizontal um, horizontal axis here so button you can say this dot button dot horizontal equals zero here so if you do this I can also try this that move it doesn't change anything it's just easy to read so if you reset the button horizontal to zero when you have button stop move then we shouldn't have any problems with the the guy running in the wrong direction from the get-go let's see let's see starts run left and run right now you can see his movement from buttons actually it looks a lot like the movement that we have whenever we um, we, we uh, click on our keyboard so basically you can always um, increase this acceleration by multiplying by a higher number and everything on the delta time um, but yeah right now I think this is fine for me so that is it that's how you can add button functionality to this game um, thank you very much for watching and do not forget to like my Facebook page follow me on Twitter and subscribe to this channel for more videos and such also remember that Inscope Studios is a community founded page and that means that your support is very important to me um, because it helped me a lot to keep creating videos and getting assets and everything for these videos. Um, if you want to support me, you can do it in two different ways. You can either get any of my projects by clicking the link in the bottom of the screen right here, or you can click um, the top link and support me on Patreon. If you support me on Patreon, you will get some different perks. You can, for example, get early video access, you can get private tutoring, or you can simply go and download every single project that I have for any of my tutorials here on YouTube. Thank you very much for watching.